welcome back to our series on electrical engineering. Tonight, our topic of conversation is current with a bit of math formalism. Previously, we introduced current as one of the words in the vocabulary of ECT electric circuit theory, and we said it had entered the field of science and engineering with a very long name, intensity of electric current, but eventually we dropped the word intensity, and now, among electrical engineers, we call that very often simply current. The current is represented with the letter I, from intensity. But what is current? In the previous video, very informally, we said current is just electricity in motion. And that is the truth. But engineers need a bit more of rigor, mathematical rigor, and also how to measure that. Well, to measure current, what we do is we set a checkpoint, like a traffic checkpoint. However, instead of counting cars and passengers, we don't. We count positive coulombs that pass per second in the same direction, to the left or to the right, and we subtract the positive coulombs that cross the checkpoint in the other direction. Like here, we replace the wire where we want to measure the current by a measuring device, in this way. This is the measuring device. It's in the path of the flow of electricity, the path of the current. That instrument will read something like 3 coulombs per second to the right. Observe that that current's value has three components. The value itself, three, absolute value. The units, coulombs per second, it could be millicoulombs per second, as when we analyze amplifiers, or it could be microcoulombs per second, or even less, to the right, to the left, north, south. The direction is as important as the other two components. That unit, coulombs per second, we use that so often that we gave it a name of its own. We call that the ampere, or amp, represent that with an uppercase A. A current of 1 amp is a current of 1 coulomb per second. That unit, the ampere, is to honor the French physicist and mathematician André-Marie Ampère. He is one of the founders of a field of physics known as classic electromagnetism. Now, let's go for a second to a virtual laboratory of circuit maker, and there I'll show you how to connect an ammeter to measure current properly, and also will show you how to do it wrong. In this circuit that has lots of devices we've never introduced in this course, but it doesn't matter, we want to measure what is the current through this wire. For that, I'm going to introduce an ammeter. This one. And I'm going to replace the wire I'm interested in finding its current by the ammeter, like this. I delete that wire, like so, and in lieu of the wire, I insert the instrument. When I run the simulation, I read what is the current through that device, R24, that is 232 milliamps. That is the right way of doing that. We want to measure in the cable, we remove the cable and we replace it with the multimeter, with the ammeter. Let's do it wrong now. This is something I have seen in our laboratories sometimes. And this would be a firing of fence for an electrician. You never connect an ammeter in parallel with a branch you're going to be measuring the current in. But I'm going to do that anyway to illustrate a common mistake. When you do this, when you connect your ammeter in parallel with the device you want to measure the current in, very often you end blowing off a few protections, if not destroying completely the measuring device. The least of the, of the problems you get is you're going to get the wrong current, as you see here. So when I run the simulation now, the ammeter says that the current is 400 milliamps instead of the value that I had before, which was the right one. This, I repeat, is a firing offense. You never connect an ammeter in parallel with the branch. You're going to be measuring the current in. No, 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 no. You have to connect the ammeter in series with that branch.
all of that is fine. We measure currents as 3 kilometers per second, 10 kilometers per second, 1,000 kilometers per second. But what happens if the flow of electricity is not constant? If the current is not a constant one, sometimes it's higher, sometimes lower, sometimes may even flow in the opposite direction. If we know how many net positive clumps have passed the checkpoint to the right at any moment, we have a function of time, Q of t, the number of net positive clumps that have crossed the checkpoint going to the right. Why net? Because we subtract the positive clumps that come back. If 10 clumps, positive clumps, cross the checkpoint to the right and two of them come back to the left, then the value of q is 8 at that point in time. We can represent that function of time as a graphic like this, q as a function of t. That curve being the net positive charge that has crossed the checkpoint going to the right at any point in time tell us things like this. At t equals 7 seconds, 8 coulombs had already crossed the checkpoint going to the right. At t equal 12 seconds, 18 kilometers are already crossed the point going to the right. What that means is that between t equal 7 seconds and 12 seconds, 10 kilometers of charge cross the checkpoint going to the right. In how long? In 5 seconds. Oh, I see. 10 kilometers cross the checkpoint in 5 seconds. 10 coulombs in 5 seconds, that is an average of how much? 10 divided by 5, 2 amps. The average current in that point of check is 2 amperes. That value happens to be the slope of the line that joins those two points. And that is the average current, it is delta Q divided by delta T, the average current in a time window delta t. But what if what we want is not the average current? What we want is the exact value of the current at one point in time. Well, what we do is we make that time window as small as possible, infinitesimally small. That is the instantaneous current at one point in time. But you remember from differential calculus in first year that that limit is the derivative of q with respect to time. That is right. The instantaneous current at any point in time is the first derivative of q with respect to time. Graphically, the derivative has a meaning. The current is dq dt. But dq dt was the slope of a line. What line? A tangent to the curve at that point in time. So at this point in time, the slope of that tangent tells us what is the current flowing through the checkpoint. We wait a few seconds, like here, and the slope has increased. That means that the current is bigger now. Positive, but bigger. A few seconds later, the current is still positive, but it's slightly less than before. We wait a bit more, and now the slope and the current are zero. A few seconds later, the current is negative. That means that actually the charge is flowing backwards through the checkpoint. It's still negative, but not as intense. And here, the current is zero again. Well, we have learned to identify currents with a slope. A slope in the graphic of Q versus T. The average current is the slope of a second, this one. And the instantaneous current is the slope of a tangent, like this one. A bit more. Take that circuit with thanks with www.circuitstoday.com. If we want to know the current flowing through that speaker, what we do is we replace part of that wire with an instrument, like this. That instrument will be counting positive coulombs flowing to the right and negative coulombs flowing to the left. The sum of them will be Q of t. Let's have a little bit of a tutorial. What is the current in this case? We are given Q as a function of time. In here we will plot the current as a function of time. 
from 0 to 5 seconds, the slope of this Q of T graphic is constant. It is 10 coulombs divided by 5 seconds. The slope is 2 coulombs per second. That is 2 amps. Let's plot that up here. The current from 0 to 5 seconds is 2 amperes. And between 5 and 7, well, the slope is 0, so the current is 0 there. And between 7 and 12, the slope of Q of T is negative. That means that the current is negative and it's constant. You see the constant slope is 10 coulombs in 12 minus 7, 5 seconds. That is negative 2 amps. That is the plot of the current as a function of time in this situation. This works backwards too. If the current is the derivative of Q with respect to time, we can integrate that equation on both sides and get that the integral of I of T is equal to the charge. Like this, the charge that flows through the checkpoint between T1 and T2 is the integral of I dt. Graphically, the charge that flows through the checkpoint between T1 and T2 is the area under the I of T curve, this area. Let's do an exercise. Tutorial time. We have an element there that we don't know what it is, but the current is given to us. That current is exponential. 10 times the exponential of negative T in seconds divided by 2 amps. And the question is, how much charge flows through the element in the first 10 seconds. That is from t equals 0 to t equal 10. We know what to do. We find the area under this curve between t0 and t10. In other words, we integrate that expression from 0 to 10. Integral of the current from 0 to 10. And that is the integral of 10 exponential negative t over 2. In the calculator, oh, that's too small. Let's zoom in. In the calculator, we enter the integral of 10 exponential negative t over 2. Enter, evaluate 1986. That is the charge. The charge is 1986. So we say, in the first 10 seconds, this current passed through that element 19.86 coulombs. And that is all for now. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you again in our next video.